In this video, we'll demonstrate a couple more join types um, less commonly used. And the first is called a natural join. And basically, that's a join operation that creates an implicit join based on common column names. Okay. It's not recommended to be that you should use it because basically it's an implicit, you're, you're leaving it up to the computer to decide what columns should be joined. So when you um, write a natural join, so I'm referring to my bookstore database where I have customers and orders. I can say, show me the customer last name and their order num from customers, C, or I should put the word as, C, natural join orders. And that's all you write. And basically you say, all right, you figure out what columns are common. Now how it figures that out is the columns have to be identically named and they must have the same data type. You do not need to use an on or, or a using clause. Now that seems like a great way to go, but as a general rule of thumb in programming or SQL, uh, implicit kinds of uh, conversions and implicit joins can be a little dangerous because uh, you're not defining it, you're leaving it up to the computer to figure it out. But in this case, it does work. Um, in our bookstore database, where the common column across all of these tables always has the exact same name, and of course it has the same data type, you could get, get away with a natural join on almost everything in this database. But I don't want you to use it just out of, um, it's just not a good habit. Because like I said, it's leaving it up to the computer and that can be problematic. I'm running to my test database where I have an employees in the department table. Same thing, the employee column or the employee table has a column called department num and the department table has a column called department num. So I could simply write from employee natural join department and it would run. It would figure out, oh, there's only one common column and so it's able to return people's last name and the department they belong to. So it's basically an equijoin, but one where you don't define the columns by saying on or using, you leave it up to the system. All right, the next join I wanna talk about is a cross join, also um, not commonly used, but you should be aware of it. Basically, it takes a row from one table and brings back every row from the second table. And then it goes and brings a row from the first table again and brings back every row from the second table. So um, if you have a first table has 10 rows and the second one has five, you're going to end up getting 50 rows back. Now, if you want to do it on purpose, here's what it looks like. I am again using my employee department table. I'm grabbing the employee name and their department from the employee and you can say cross join department. Now I'm going to sort them so it's easy for you to tell by the last name and department names, but it's going to be easy for you to tell what's going on. So when I run that and let's scroll this up, here's my employee and all of the departments. Business customer has nothing to do with which one he belongs to. It's just bringing back everyone. And if I scroll down, here's my second employee, business development, right? And then it goes through all the departments for that employee. And then we get down to Brooks, my third employee and all the departments. So basically, it's um, it, you have to be careful, first of all, because if you do this accidentally, you can grind your system to a halt if you do a cross join on two tables that have a lot of rows into them. And the way people do this accidentally, especially students in my classes, is uh, not paying attention. They'll just go from employee, comma, department, right? They just list the two tables. They don't mention anything about joining. When you do that, that in essence becomes a cross join. If you don't have the word join on or join using or natural join or even uh, any, any join keyword here, left, right join, you just list the two tables in the from clause, you've just done a cross join. So again, I'll scroll up and you'll recognize that I got the same result as when I used the word cross join. So be careful, anytime you're joining tables, you um, unless you want a cross join, you'd better specify how these two tables are gonna be joined. And I will mention one example where I actually did use a cross join on purpose, I, I needed it. 
And it was a database where uh, the Forest Service was studying bat populations and they could go visit all these different locations in the forest and they had a sensor that could uh, detect bat noises. Well, we had a table, that, uh, the bat table, that listed, I think it was 24 different species of bats. And that's all that was in it, just a list of bats. Well, then we had another table of the visits where they would actually go out in the forest and listen for them. Well, of course, on any one visit, they may have only heard one or two different species. But the point of what they wanted to show was that on this visit, I heard these two species, but I didn't hear the other 22, right? So then on another visit, I maybe heard a couple other species, but I didn't hear the other how many ever were left, right? And so basically, I did a cross-join where I could say from the visit table, I want to cross-join the bat table. Because on any one visit, I didn't have a list of 24 bats because I only heard two of them, but I wanted to demonstrate. I put basically a little zero in the column that said, all right, these 20 bats we didn't hear, these four bats we did. So I just did a cross-join between the visit table with the bat table. So occasionally there may be a purpose for it. Another example somebody told me once was you could have a table with the months in it and another one with just uh, numbers and you could do a cross join and basically make some kind of calendar although I don't couldn't remember how they handled the the 3031 conundrum but so uh, it's not used often um, the most of the time I've seen it used is because students are making a mistake but occasionally you may have a purpose for it.